What's the deal with DC blockers? <laughs> Matt from Sweden wants to know. And Matt writes, very recently I tried a DC blocker from the Swedish company Genving. It's called a Supra DC blocker. The sound that came out of the system changed completely. It sounded more relaxed, um, at the same time with more control in the bass, plus more sparkle in the top end. Another big difference was the depth in the sound that suddenly appeared like it was three-dimensional. I know that clean power to the system definitely has a positive influence to the sound, but how can a DC blocker make such an impact? Right. right -oh. I am in the conference room in front of a whiteboard, and I'm going to explain to you what a DC blocker is, how it works, why we would want one, and then maybe I can speculate a little bit to Matt's question. I'll do my best for Ohm's Law, law listeners to try and explain what I'm drawing on the board. So first, what, what is a DC blocker and why would we want one? On the AC line, the power that comes out of your wall socket, you are supposed to have alternating current. So if I were to draw that on the board, we would draw a sine wave. And for Ohm's Law listeners, you know what a sine wave looks like, right? It's, it's a, uh, a, just a, a series of up and down, gently uh, moving waves like you might find in the ocean, just up and down, up and down, right? And if we were to draw a line straight through the sine wave, cutting it in half, then we would realize that what, what's happening is AC is simply moving DC voltage. It, so this half up here, the top half, is, is moving plus, higher and higher plus, and then goes back down, and the center line here is zero and then down here is minus, and then we go from plus to minus, plus to minus, and we do that in a very smooth fashion. That's what alternating current is, and it's what comes out of our wall. A battery has direct current, meaning plus is steady to minus. There's no alternating between plus and minus. Okay. On many systems, in fact, most AC systems, there is actually a component of DC. So it's leakage that happens in any number of ways, and it's not important, okay? And so if, if I were to take a DC voltmeter, plug it into my AC plug, I would measure, oh, I don't know, 50 millivolts, okay? Let, let's just let's just say that uh, it's 50 millivolts. But, and that's kind of inconsequential because most systems don't really mind. But sometimes there is an excessive amount of DC. Sometimes as high as, I've seen as high as a volt, but typically you'll get half a volt, which we would call 500 millivolts. So 500 millivolts is half a volt. 250 millivolts, a quarter of a volt. Just so we get our terms straight, okay? And that happens when the transformers get old and leak. And, and, and if it gets really high, you can call your utility company and say, hey, I, I've got DC on my line, and they'll come out and change the transformer for you. I've actually done it. And they know, they know about it, it's not a good thing, and they will fix it for you. However, in the meantime, you might have a problem with that. And the problem, here's the problem a transformer, right? So we know from prior Paul's posts, prior Ask Paul videos and Ohm's Law, we know that a transformer is nothing more than a coil of wire. I'm drawing a coil of wire. And this coil of wire, when connected up to an alternating current source that is steadily moving at a specific frequency, number of times within a second, typically 50 or 60, depending on where you live, this will become a magnet. This coil, as you put voltage into it, becomes a magnet, and it makes a moving magnetic field, right? And then there's another coil over here, and that picks up the move and converts it back to electrical energy. Okay, 
The problem is, if I put DC into this input coil, it's going to turn this into a permanent magnet, right? Because if it's always got a certain amount of voltage on it, this becomes a permanent magnet. And these, and I'm drawing some iron laminations between that. Those iron laminations will get polarized in one direction. And if it's a high enough DC voltage, they'll actually start buzzing and vibrating and making nasty noises, something you don't want. And it skews the transformer so it works uh, asymmetrically, which is something we don't want. <clears throat> so what do we do about that? Okay, we want to make a DC blocker. We want to block that DC while preserving our AC. Well, one way we know to do that is by adding capacitors, right? But unfortunately, the capacitor size you'd need at these low frequencies and delivering current are kind of prohibitive. We're not going to go there, right? We're going to make what's called a DC blocker. And I don't want to have this drag out forever, so I'm going to do this real quick. What we do, because we made one called the Humbuster. It was a great product. I get people all the time saying, make it again, please, please. And we might. We just, I, you know, we sold like 20 or 30 a month. It's not like a big thing. And, and that's, anyway. What Matt's device did is basically it took two full wave bridge rectifiers, and I'll explain what that is, uh, and put them in series. Another bridge rectifier here. Oh, I'm not drawing it all that well. Let's see, we want to go here and here and then out and then uh, out again and that's AC. Okay, <clears throat> these, these bridge rectifiers are what you, they're little square boxes and you'll find those inside of every piece of equipment out there. And they essentially are, are four diodes inside of a little package. And uh, the AC comes in here, and the diodes basically separate the AC, the AC into um, uh, a, a plus and minus, right? So you wind up with this. Uh, and what I'm drawing on the board is that the a uh, bridge rectifier, the output of a bridge rectifier gives you these little uh, half outputs. So they're all plus and they're all minus, but they still they're still AC. And then we're going to, from there, we're going to hook it up to a capacitor and we're going to smooth that out and you'll get rippled DC. And then if you put it through a regulator, you get straight DC. Okay, and that's how we get DC from AC. We run it through these um, rectifiers. However, there's a kind of a cool trick. And that's what these DC blockers do. If you put two, um, you can do it with one, but we, we use two. If you put two AC bridges in series with each other and then continue on with the AC, you, you still, what, what happens is uh, you'll get about a half a volt or so blockage of DC because the, the, these diodes take about 0.6 volts before they'll actually turn on. Right? So for the very first half a volt, let's call it, of anything um, uh, going from zero to plus, nothing will happen. And then all of a sudden, the diode will start to conduct over half a volt, and it passes it along. Well, if our DC is like half a volt or, or less, uh, or in this case, even more, because we have two of these in series, it won't pass through. So what you wind up having is a, uh, an AC output that skips the very first part of it and then creates, it's a little step in here, and that's going to get rid of that DC. And, and to, to fancy it up and do a better job, we put some capacitors here. and uh, it, it, I mean, it, 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 this is simplified, right? We're going to put some capacitors to kind of bridge the gap and just little guys like that. So anyway, that's how a DC blocker works. And you could build your own. Um, I think, did we have plans somewhere? Maybe we had plans, I don't know. In any case, why does that make something sound better? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, here's my guess. If you actually have DC on the line, I know for a fact your transformer is not going to perform as well as it can. It's one of the reasons when we make our power plants, 
there's a DC blocker built into the power plant and because our output is regenerated with a new sine wave, there is no DC on the output and, and, and hence your, your transformer uh, works very well. But should, should for some reason your transformer become magnetized, it definitely uh, screws up its performance. We have a thing on there called clean wave, which is like a degaussing signal that goes through and degausses all the transformers in your system and cleans them up. But as soon as you put DC back on, you're back in that same position. So I think that's likely why it's sounding better. Matt's because you have DC and you're blocking it. Now the transformer can work in a symmetrical fashion, which will result in better sound. Hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.